because the, the gut, and, and I think the thing that is, is probably surprising to a lot of people is that the, the epithelial cells of the gut, particularly, so we're talking now the small and, and large intestine, are really their, their immune cells. So besides worrying about absorption and secretion, they are continually monitoring uh, and doing those things, one, to help maintain health, but then two, just to see what's, you know, they're, they're continually sensing. So any, you know, disturbances or perturbations in, in anything. So when we deal with intakes, uh, we deal with heat stress, which obviously affects uh, intakes, uh, ingredient content, all those things have a, have, an, have a major effect then on how the gut and the microbiome interact in order to maintain the health of the animal. everyone, this is Luis Ferreiro, one of the hosts of the Dairy Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. And today, we'll have a discussion about the importance of gut health. And to help us with that, we have Dr. Chris Chase, Professor Emeritus at South Dakota State University. Chris, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, it's a pleasure for us to, to learn uh, with your experience in this topic. But before we get into this topic that I know is very important and affects not only dairy cows, but humans and all the other animal species, give us a brief background about yourself. I'm glad to be here. Glad to be with another fellow badger. I'm uh, originally from South Dakota uh, and uh, grew up uh, 100 miles north of Brookings and then I actually came here to do my pre-vet and then I'm a veterinarian, so I went to Iowa State to get my DVM. Uh, and then I was involved for about five years in, in mixed animal practice, uh, but doing a, actually a fair amount of dairy work. I worked for a veterinarian who hated to do DA surgery. So whenever I would go on a vacation, I could count on at least four or five DAs uh, when I got back. And then uh, I uh, went to grad school then at the University of Wisconsin in uh, immunology and virology. And then I spent a couple of years working for the Agricultural Research Service in Laramie, Wyoming, and I came back here in 92. Uh, I've been here since uh, 1992. And then besides being at the university where my, my group really works with uh, particularly innate immunity in, in cattle, uh, I've also have a, have a research company and uh, that company works with all the big companies in terms of vaccine uh, trials. So we do lots of work on things like lepto vaccines and BBD and those kind of things. So, uh, and then, because I had nothing else to do. I, I, until 2009, I was still doing some practice uh, just south of here. So um, I, I, I tried to keep myself busy. Introducing Ultrasorb R3.0, Volac's comprehensive and complete solution to reduce the negative impact of naturally occurring toxins on ruminants. Ultrasorb R3.0 is a species-specific product designed to mitigate the effects of specific mycotoxins in the gastrointestinal tract of ruminants. Ultrasorb R3.0 also offers lipopolysaccharide binding capabilities. Endotoxins such as LPS can contribute to inflammation in ruminants with energy partitioned to mount an immune response instead of production. Learn more about Ultrasorb R3.0 at volac.com. Well, I think that's great because, you know, whenever you have someone that has that understanding you do, uh, people have to to at least appreciate that and make sure they continue to learn. Said that, I know that it, you, you can guide us through this, right? So please explain to us a little bit about the role of the uh, gut in regulating the immune system and why is that so important to animals? Well, I, I think that the, the, th the first thing we have to realize is that actually the gut is the largest immune organ of the body. Uh, and, and, and for any kind of animal welfare uh, and, and health, uh, the, the gut uh, has, to, has to really be in, in harmony with the microbiome. And the microbiome and the gut are continually uh, interacting with each other. And so uh, because the, the gut, and, and I think the thing that it's probably surprising to a lot of people is that the, the epithelial cells of the gut, particularly, so we're talking now the small and large intestine, are really their, their immune cells. So besides worrying about absorption and secretion, they are continually monitoring uh, and doing those things, one, to help maintain health, but then two, just to see what's, you know, they're, they're continually sensing. So any, you know, disturbances or perturbations in, in anything, so when we deal with intakes, uh, we deal with heat stress, which obviously affects uh, intakes, uh, ingredient content. All those things 
have it have an have a major effect then on how the gut and the microbiome interact in order to maintain the health of the animal. So it's really it's a partnership. And I like I said when when, when I took immunology, we, we just talked about mucosal immunology and like well that's part of the, the gut's part of that. But I would turn that around and say without the gut we don't have an immune system. So that's basically uh, a very good perspective because tell us nutritionists that we have to protect that gut right? Because otherwise, we're going to start having a lot of issues that uh, very likely we don't know how to solve. We're going to have to ask someone else to take care of that for us and go from there. Said that, how do we keep the gut healthy so we can make sure that the immune system continues to function? And I know you mentioned a lot of those key interactions. A couple of those that I think are key would be obviously, from my perspective, nutrition, and I'm very biased by that. But heat stress as well, right? Because it's something that um, in a lot of places is very hard to control uh, and drastically affect animals, right? But going back to the question, right? So how do we keep that gut healthy? Well, you know, the first thing I'm going to tell you is that it begins with something even even simpler than that, and that's just water. Okay, it's a, it's a, it's a, because because the thing thing is that I think the probably one of the most under uh, under uh, appreciated issues is water, uh, and 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 because of, without adequate water, obviously that has a major effect on intake. But when you think about the immune system and you think about the gut, I mean, the gut's coated with mucus that's made up of water. Uh, the movement of of ingesta requires that we have plenty of water uh, and, you know, we have good quality water. And, I, and that, you know, one of the things that I've had dealt with over the years uh, is, is just the issues, for example, with straight voltage where the, one of the bigger problems is about intakes and particularly water intake is oftentimes they'll have that. But, but, but so to me, it begins with water. So good quality water and having an adequate intake. And then, and then when you just, you know, spoke the heat stress, I mean, that's a big problem and with heat stress in terms of, you know, of, of being able to, maintain those intakes. And, and then, uh, you know, it, it really gets back to, I mean, the, the basic, and it's like the Mediterranean diet, which is, you know, which cows are on, which is, is all, it's about fiber. It's about roughage uh, and roughage intake. And we know that in, you know, in young calves, what, whatever we can do to sort of get that, uh, the, that end of the fiber thing going really helps in terms of microbiome diversity. And, and the other thing, and this gets back to towards sort of the whole balance thing. So with intakes, then gets us into, and certainly Lance Baumgart is, Spent a lot of time talking about about leaky gut, but I mean, leaky gut is real. Uh, leaky gut is uh, you know, and it goes in both directions. In other words, if I have a respiratory problem, that in turn, because it's systemic, can also affect the gut. But the gut is really the driver, as far as I'm concerned. So really, what we can do in terms of uh, you know of those intakes and you know making the transitions that we need to make, uh, you know, feed quality. Uh, is huge, and and because anything that that turns those cows off and uh, and 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 results in, in decreased intake, beginning with you know, and, and the one that's obvious for most of us is heat stress because you know, appetite uh, is dramatically affected by heat stress, and unfortunately, the good Lord didn't teach cows how to sweat, so we really we, you know it, it, it that ends up being a big. So I think what we can do in terms of heat abatement and management. What we can do in terms of making sure that our, you know, the quality of our ingredients, that what we're doing with our TMRs uh, makes sense, and then you know, the, the, like there's what I call the sort of the three, uh, vit or three, three minerals that I think of as zinc, selenium, and, and copper being really key with the immune system, and on the other side, vitamin A, D, and E uh, being really essential too. And I think A, and, and I think we've seen this more in young calves appreciating that in fact that we think you know the movements that a is not an issue but i i, I would i would uh, say i think more times than not that it, there's an issue that we you know that, that's kind of unresolved so th those you know it's, it's sort of the basics of cow management is helps us in terms of managing that immune system in the gut no absolutely and 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 yes as you said those are cow basics but uh, that there are still issues, right? That happens in the field, and sometimes we miss some of the basics. Yeah, water intake is key, right? Milk is pure water, basically eighty-eight percent. But what what you mentioned about you know the quality of the feeds and making sure that the animal maintain intake, I think is great. Because um, a couple of years ago, we had a study where um, we had a, a small part of our bunker. Uh, a haylage bunker uh, being with some clostridia and some of the cows that ate that they had a lot of digestive upsets and a lot of issues you know uh, even some uh, HBS cases which 
uh, traditionally we don't associate with Clostridia, right? But it's purely some of those uh, digest are moving so fast through the gastrointestinal tract and moving some of the corn. And I, I do feed a lot of corn, so I, I, I know that I, I'm guilty. But uh, uh, no, absolutely. I think that makes so much sense to me. And uh, I think that's a great, a great uh, description of that. Um, are there, you mentioned minerals, vitamins, obviously fiber. Um, are there any sort of additives that play a role as well? Or those uh, more basic traditional components of the diet are more important to ensure gut health? Well, Luis, <laughs> As you and I know, uh, that is a really uh, emerging area because we've certainly we, we've worked a lot with probiotics and prebiotics. Okay, it, 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 for example, I mean, there's obviously other things that, in terms of, of that, but I mean, I, that certainly, as we look at, at at gut health and we look at uh, particularly, I think the development of the microbiota and the microbiome. Though we're gonna, I think we, we're getting to understand more and more about some of those additives, and I and I and I, and I absolutely, I think they have a, they have a huge role, and I think. In a dairy cow, it's, you know, it's not, it, to me, because of, of, of everything we understand with residues and antimicrobials uh, is quite as is on the beef side. But I mean, I think the, the use of those is only going to increase. And we certainly, we have seen, you know, where we, we're particularly, I think, in, in, in influencing microbiome. Because the other thing about microbiome is that it, it influences, so mucus depth is related to how the quality of your microbiome. The amount of secretory IgA is related to, to the to the quality of your microbiome, and again, those are all things in that we can, that we enhance. Those we you know we, we look at, at the botanicals and some of those things, I, and you know, and I think you know, in, in, in the calf, I think there's you know they obviously have a different role than they do uh, in the cow, and because I think in the, in the calf we're looking more at microbiome development, uh, in the in the in the cow we're looking at more obviously microbiome maintenance uh, in order to keep that going. But I, you know, it's one of those things that you know, it's, it's to me, it's a, it's emerging. I think what's clear is that th those those types of additives are are going to be used in not as a single silver bullet, but rather there's going to be combinations in at certain times. So maybe some are going to be better during times of heat stress because we're after something you know a little bit different there to have you know our tight junctions regulated. And we know, I think the other thing that it's become really interesting. I mean, so so it sort of blew me away when we understood that that smooth muscle, so gut movement, is really dependent on signals from the immune system. So macrophages actually send the signals to the smooth, smooth the neurons to the smooth muscles. Say, okay, gut, let's have peristalsis. So so it really gets back to again, what can we do to to keep that uh, that that gut ha happy? That we have that you know, what we call the anti-inflammatory response in the gut, so that the gut can help maintain health. Uh, and but that, that really begins because of the partnership between the gut and the and the microbiome, and those two have got to they got to be talking to each other. And when you've got feed quality issues, or and we've certainly seen, I think the other thing we've seen you talked about cross stream, we've seen where there's you know where there's a lot of yeast. In other words, you know the feed this guy that there's a, a, a huge amount of yeast, and that seems to throw cows off as well because that microbiome was dependent on a balance, and now we're throwing something else at it and. Guess what? It's got to make a, a, a make a correction. So. Oh, absolutely. Yeast is a is a huge deal, and my primary area of research is silage, and and I'll tell you, we silage scientists we overlook uh, a lot of things, but not yeast. I think there is a lot that we have to learn about that and the impact uh, to animals. And so I'm very happy you mentioned that because it matches perfectly with uh, what I believe and some others have been discussing in the field. And and yes, it is a it is a major issue and certainly contributes to, to a lot of uh, different things. It doesn't have to be this hard to keep cows pregnant. At Virtus Nutrition, we understand the negative impact that lost pregnancies have on a dairy's economics. Every failed pregnancy means more money spent on expensive semen, additional replacements to raise, and fewer valuable beef calves to sell. Feed what embryos need. Strata with EPA DHA, the pregnancy nutrient. Chris, uh, thanks again for, I'm going to say, this mini lecture that you gave us about how important the gut is, right? Uh, obviously, I had no doubts on how important it was, but uh, you, you just told me more things that I have to care about. Uh, and I'm certain that uh, some of the nutritionists at home 
are also uh, eager to learn more about that. So do you have any final thoughts or any advice for anyone that is learning more about this area and want to continue to better understand how important uh, keeping the gut healthy is? Well, I, I mean, there, there continue to be, you know, really, really good um, review articles that, that keep coming out. I mean, it's, it's one of those things you just need to be able to do it, uh, you know, uh, keep your keep your nose in the literature because i think it's 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 to me it's sort of fascinating to because to see what comes out of it um and and not and not to necessarily give a, a plug to anything but but there's actually uh a bovine immunology online book that that i was part of that that uh, uh we could probably put in your show notes as well because it because it's available and it's it's free and it's uh online where we talk about gut health we talk about uh, a lot of things in terms of, of, of just what the things that we talked about today, but uh, I'd be glad to share that with you too, if that would be useful. Absolutely. If you share the, the, the link with us or the information with us, we'll make sure we post together with those videos and people at home can have access and, and continue to better understand. So thanks again, Chris. Really appreciate the discussion today. Uh, thank you, you at home for joining us for this podcast once again, and I hope to see you soon.